Welcome to your yoga practice. Before you get started, make sure that you have all of your props around that you might need. So extra blankets, extra pillows, anything that you might need um, to make the poses more accessible. So I have yoga blocks here to extend my arms a little bit for lunges and whatnot. Lunges, positions kind of like this, you know? So my hands don't have to go all the way to the floor. Um, but you might not have blocks at home, so use whatever you have. If you've got a couple of big can, tomato cans or juice cans, something like that can work really well. You don't necessarily have to go out and invest in yoga blocks. Um, but if you are interested in getting some, you can buy them relatively cheaply at Walmart or Winners um, or any sporting goods store. So make sure before you get started that you've got everything around you that you need. Um, and starting out, a good place to do these, these exercises and this practice might even be in your bed because you already have lots of blankets, lots of pillows, and the, the bed is gonna be a lot more cushioned and forgiving on your knees than the floor will be. So keep that in mind. Um, we, we made it okay using mats and, and blankets and bolsters here, and maybe that will be okay at home as well, but um, oftentimes, especially if I'm really sore, I'll do my yoga practice in bed just because it's, it makes it that much more relaxing. Um, also, you're gonna want a timer. So if you're doing this practice, with just this video, then that's perfect. But if you, if you, when you get into doing this practice or doing some of these poses on your own without listening to the video, um, I suggest using a timer so that you can balance out one side with the other. So you're doing about the same amount of time on each side. For, but for today, you can just follow along with my voice. So we're going to start in lazy boy or lazy girl pose. Um, if you remember, that's this position here with the bolster or if you don't have a bolster, a couch cushion or a pillow, anything will work for a couple pillows even, or a couple of blankets stacked up. Um, you want one end of your pillow to be a little higher than the other, so you're on a bit of an incline. And then have something underneath your knees as well. Having your knees bent like this just makes, takes any pressure out of your hips and low back. I've got a blanket underneath my, underneath my seat so that the, there's the mat, and then there's also a blanket. You might even put two blankets just so it's extra comfortable. We want this pose to be really comfortable. So from here, you just lay back. Let your legs relax over the bolster. Find a comfortable position for your head. Let your shoulders relax down around the bolster. And then start to breathe into your belly. If, you, if you're not used to breathing into your belly, you might even want to place your hands on your abdomen. Breathe into the hands. If you find it uncomfortable for your shoulders here, if your arms are kind of, feel like they don't really have anywhere to relax, put an extra pillow on either side of you so your shoulders can relax onto the pillows and your arms can comfortably rest here. For the first few moments, follow your breath in through the nose. Feel it expand your chest and your belly. As you exhale, let the belly relax, the chest relax. Scan your body, notice if there's any parts of you that are feeling extra tender, extra achy. Maybe you feel like you are a little tight in your knees, ankles, wrists, any, any of the joints. Start to move them a bit, wiggle them around, see how they're feeling. And then we're just gonna stretch out really long. Take a big full body stretch, let your spine arch, reach with your toes. Bend your knees, roll your, your bolster out of the way your bottom bolster, and just roll to one side and come on up. From here, we're going into legs up the wall, and you might want something under your head and neck here, but not necessarily. Play around with it, see how it feels with it, without it. 
Basically, you want to get about one foot from the wall. So your hips are about one foot from the wall. And then you just kind of roll your legs up the wall like this. So this can be a little tricky if you're in, in you doing this practice in your bed. If you have some kind of a strange headboard or a shelf, then you won't be able to do this pose in bed. So you might have to do your practice um, just on the floor. So we're gonna hold this position. So you stay in that position. And as you hold that position, keep your legs straight up the wall. Take a few breaths here. Point your toes up towards the ceiling and then flex them back towards you. Point them again up towards the ceiling and flex them back towards you. Do that one more time, point them up and flex them back. From here, cross your right ankle onto your left knee. So it looks like this. Right ankle onto left knee, and then bend this left knee until you feel just the right amount of stretch here in your right hip and the outside of your right leg. You might feel this into your low back a bit. And we're simply gonna hold that position. So let yourself relax there. Let your shoulders relax. Breathe heavy into your belly. Practice taking your breath even deeper than your belly. So taking it right down into the hip or the low back or into the outside of your leg, wherever you feel this, this stretch and this position the most. Breathe into that spot. Breathe out from that spot. Imagine that the breath in is filling up that place, that tight spot, that scar tissue. It's filling it up with air like a balloon. And when you exhale, that air is leaving the body and you've got more space. You've got more space to relax into, more room for the body to soften around the pose. Take another few breaths here. And then lengthen your left leg up. Reach your right leg up. Point and flex the toes a few times. And we'll head to the other side. So left ankle crosses to right leg. Bend that knee until you feel a good amount of stretch. So the perfect amount of stretch or stress that you feel in the joints and the, and the body parts when you move into these pose is going to be varied between poses and between sides. So one side is, is going to be feeling a little bit more compromised from either overcompensation or from scar tissue. Um, so really listen to your body as you move in and out of these poses and as you hold the pose. If it feels like you get to a point where it's too much or you're having a hard time breathing, take a little break, come out of the pose, go back in, but not quite as deep as you were the first time. So again, on this side, you're breathing into the tight spots, using that breath to kind of blow them up like a balloon, to massage the area, and then the exhale to let go of tension, to relax into the pose more. And from there, go ahead and release. Reach the legs back up the wall. Point and flex the toes. Circle the ankles. Anything that feels helpful for you to release here. And then to come off of the wall, you're basically just gonna pull your knees towards you, roll to one side, and press yourself up. From here, we're coming onto our hands and knees. If you've got all your pillows close by, you might need to just roll things off to the sides. So you've got a little bit of space. 
grab your extensions of your hands. So for me it's blocks, for you it might be tomato soup cans. And one foot comes forwards, one foot goes back. If you need extra cushion under your back knee, be sure to use it. Don't try to, don't try to play tough, but listen to your body. You don't want to cause any extra, extra strain or extra pain in your body. You're carrying enough of that around that we're trying to make things feel better. We're trying to loosen things up. There will be discomfort. There will be, you know, things that don't feel as nice as just laying down with a hot water bottle or some ice on you, but we don't want to be causing extra strain. So you get into your position and we want, our, we want our lunge to be deep enough that you feel a little bit of an opening here in the front of your leg before you push too far forwards. So get into a position that's comfortable, but you feel a little bit of stretch here in the front of this leg. And then you're just gonna push into the stretch, so sink your hips forwards for a few breaths. It's important you breathe into the poses and then pull back just enough to take the pressure off. Again, push forward. Hold it in the stretch, breathe into the stretch. If we don't breathe into the stretch, the nervous system is triggered to think that something's wrong, so it will tighten things up. So if you can breathe into the stretch, your body's gonna relax a little more. Pull back, take a little breather. And do that one more time. Push the hips forwards. And pull back. And we're gonna switch sides. So we're gonna do, we're shooting towards getting about three breaths each time we push the hips forwards. Move your props around to make yourself comfortable. Walk your back foot back until you feel a good amount of stretch. And then from here, melt the hips forwards. Take three breaths. Pull the hips back just enough to take the pressure off. And then we'll go right back into that stretch again. Pull out of the stretch, and we're gonna do that one more time. Push forwards, hold it, breathe into it. And pull back. Make your way onto your hands and knees, and Maybe sink the hips back towards your heels or walk your legs out one at a time like this from a tabletop position. Do what feels good for you to, to help you release through the legs and the hips. We're going into that, that deep squat position that we did with all the blocks underneath your bottom. So for this one, you might have to find something creative to use. My suggestion would probably be some books, a big stack of books. And then you can just take books out. You might remember that um, we had four blocks. We had four blocks when you were here. I've got three here right now. Um, I can't remember the exact measurement of these, but as you can see, it would be about not quite two feet high was what you were sitting on. So about a foot and a half, foot and three quarters probably. Um, and we did, we started with that and we worked down to three, about one like this. And then we worked down to this height. So you need a, a stack of books or a, a stack of uh, pieces of lumber or something that you can use to, to sit here, to sit down on. So we started in a standing position and then from standing, we just got you to squat down. We had two blocks here for your hands as well. I don't have two extra blocks here right now, 
but I'm just going to use, use these to signify the blocks. So we had you sitting on the blocks like this for mm, a few breaths, about four, five, maybe six breaths. And then you'd lift your hips into the air, fold your head towards the floor, stretch it out. And then again, sit your bum down. Hold this position again. Your knees are pointing out to the sides. If you feel like you can already go down a little bit, you might take one piece of wood out or one, um, one book out, whatever you're using. It's good to have something under your hands, remember. Even though I don't have the blocks here, you had, you had your blocks like this to give you that extra support so you feel really stable here. That's important. And then again, we'll fold it. Bend the knees again, sit down low. Hold it here one last time. And again, you might be ready to take out another block. And just hold it, breathe into it. It might feel a little bit intense, it might feel really deep. Breathe deeper. sometimes helps to close the eyes or just steady the eyes on one spot and keep bringing your attention back to your breath. The breath will bring you into your body, help you feel what's going on. We don't want to detach from the body, but we want to be present even if the sensation is strong. Feel it, breathe into it, and again, use the breath to help create space. And one last time, we're going to fold forward, lift the hip. Stretch it out. And bend your knees. You don't have to come back to your block, but instead just make your way down onto your back. That's where we're, that's where we're heading next is onto your back. So you can just go right there. Um, have your bolsters close by, your pillows close by. We're going to use them again, but for now, you just need one block and lie down flat. When you're in this pose, what we don't want to do is look to the side. You want to always keep your head looking straight up. Roll your shoulders underneath of you so the shoulder blades are flattened out onto the mat. Your collarbones are open. Walk your feet in until your heels almost touch your buttocks. With your block, first of all, between your knees. Squeeze the block. Squeeze your thighs against the block. Squeeze it tight so you hold it tight. And then lift your hips up. Breathe here. Come down, pull your knees towards your belly, lift your legs up, straighten them, and bend them. Straighten them as long as you can, right up as high towards the ceiling as possible. Bend, lengthen, bend. Again, squeeze those upper legs as you lengthen. One more time. Bend your knees, plant your feet, lift your hips. Breathe here. Keep squeezing your block. Lift a little higher for one breath. Hips down, knees in, lengthen and bend. Lengthen, so as you lengthen, reach through the heels Flex your toes down towards you. Bend and straighten. Two more. Good. Work.
work. One last time, we're gonna bend the knees, plant the feet, lift the hips, breathe here. Breath is in and out through the nose. Keep pressing down through the shoulders and backs of the arms. Keep pressing firmly through the feet, hugging the inner thighs into the block. One last time, we're gonna roll the back down to the floor. When your low back touches, lift the feet. Reach through the heels, flex the toes down. Bend the knees. Reach through the heels. Bend the knees. Three more times. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Bend your knees, plant your feet, and go ahead and take the block out. Once you take the block out, just let your knees sway right and left a couple times. And we'll roll onto the right. Use your hands to push yourself up. And we're going into saddle pose, which was, I can't quite recall exactly how we had you propped, but I know we had a lot of, a lot of blocks under you. So you basically looked something like this. I think we might have had, we had three or four blocks under, under you. And we had your knees bent like this. And then we had some bolsters behind you, which you weren't, which you weren't quite using. Um, so for this pose, it's really important that you're set up quite close to the wall. So close that your, your toes are at least a a foot away from the wall. No, no more than a foot, but a foot away from the wall or less. And then you can have some pillows or blankets behind you so that you've got something to support your low back. I don't have enough, enough pillows here for myself right now, and we had lots more for you. I think we had about, I think we had about four of them, four bolsters. So you would need like a bunch of pillows or a bunch of blankets behind you. What's important here is that when you're, whatever you're sitting on, your, your books or pieces of wood, you're able to sit. So you're, you don't want the knees to be so bent that it's hard for you to, to keep, your, keep breathing. It's like, like making you kind of gasp for air or feel really stressed. We don't, that means you're too deep. That means you need to sit a little higher. Um, one other thing we did with you was we put, we took a blanket like this, and you can use a towel, a, a hand towel, or a regular size towel, depending on how big you need it. We used this full size last time, and we put this under each ankle. So this pose is gonna be extra important for all of the scar tissue that you have going on in the knees, and the ankles, and the whole, really the whole front of the legs, the quads, there's, you know, there's weakness in the quads, but at the same time, they're, they're really tight um, with, with all different stuff going on in there. So we need, to, we need to open them up, stretch them out, but we also need to strengthen them. And we've done some things in this practice to strengthen them, and then this is, this is to open them back up, to stretch them out a little more. We also did some things like the lunges we did help to open up the body, open up this part of the body. Um, but this one is really good and we hold it for a little bit longer. We want to stay here for at least two minutes um, and ideally working yourself up to being able to hold it for five minutes. And you might notice that after you've been here for a little bit, uh, maybe you start with three blocks or, or five pieces of wood under you or ten books under you, but then after you've been here for a few minutes, you might be able to take two or three of the books out and still sit comfortably. So one of the keys in this pose is these rolled up towels or blankets under your ankles. That's gonna make it so much more manageable. And then find a comfortable height for your, to, for your seat. And then initially, you're not gonna be leaning too far back anyways. You were, you were very upright 
um, during our first session, and so you're probably going to need to stay fairly upright for the first, for the first, at least the first week or so that you're doing this. You might end up opening up um, really quickly. We don't really know that yet, but don't overdo it. Listen to your body um, and only go as far as it feels comfortable, as it feels accessible for you. You want to challenge yourself a little bit, but not to the point that it's painful and not to the point that you're going to cause some sort of strain or injury, obviously, right? Um, so yeah, just pay attention when you're here. If you feel like, oh, feels like it would feel nice to just lean back a little bit, and then maybe you start to lean back a little bit. You can lean back with the support of your hands, or I prefer in this pose, I didn't, I, I didn't gather enough props before I started, but I prefer in this pose to have lots of pillows behind me so that I can really, so that I can really lean back and make it really comfortable because this is an important position for you, for the scar tissue, for the mobility. Um, so the longer we can get you staying here, hanging out here, the better, the better it's gonna be. Um, if you feel a lot of pressure in your low back, lift your hips, tuck your tailbone. So just sort of tilt the pelvis, tuck your tailbone forwards, and that will lengthen out the space in the low back, but it will also make it a little more of a stretch or a little more intensity here. So just find the balance there. So we've been here for a few minutes now, and when you come out of this pose, you're gonna feel like you've been pried apart because you have been a little bit on a very deep level. You're bones, your tendons and ligaments have been, have just been stretched on sort of a microscopic level. Very, they've been pried apart very, very, uh, very, very slightly. So when we come out, you just want to move really carefully. Uh, my suggestion for coming out of this pose would be just to come out enough that you can get rid of whatever's underneath your seat and then as, as smooth as possible, stretch yourself out onto your belly or, or you might have a have something like this under your chest to hold, um, just to stretch out the legs, or you can do this child's pose position, which can feel really good after that. There's not a right or wrong way to come out of a, a long held pose like that. Um, hands and knees and stretch out the legs like, like we did earlier, that's also a good option. Um, child's pose. So all of these options that I'm mentioning, they're all perfect to use, and I suggest you just try a few of them. Child's pose is knees apart, and your belly kind of goes between your thighs, and you can rest on your forearms or, or make a pillow for your head. Um, laying on your belly, if that's not comfortable, then try something like this underneath of your chest to keep the belly, some of the pressure off the belly might feel a bit better. And and then from there, we're going to make our way down onto our backs again for our final, final resting position. This is where we, where we did the acupuncture needles last time in this pose called Shavasana, is what we call it in yoga. Um, and we put you back in the same position with, with, the, lazy, with the lazy boy pose with the, with the bolster behind us or the pillow behind you. Um, so you can do that. Absolutely, or you can have nothing underneath of you. You can have more stuff underneath of you. What's important here is that you get really comfortable. You might even just lie flat on your back with your legs over the bolster. So you can stay with your, you can get yourself into whatever position feels good, either laying flat with legs over the bolster or back in your lazy boy position with the, so that the head's elevated a little bit um, and legs over something. It is nice to have something under your legs that again, just keeps the pressure off the back. So get comfortable, settle in, make sure that your shoulders are rolled back so your chest is open. This just allows air to flow more freely through your chest and into your belly. Each time you take a breath in, feel your body Slightly rise up, fill up, and as you exhale, just let your body get a little heavier, a little softer. Stay in this position for at least 10 full breaths in and out. 10 sort of focused, mindful breaths where you pay attention to the sound of the breath, the sensation and feeling of the breath coming in, and you pay attention to it going out. And your brain might 
jump to all different thoughts outside of this room, outside of your mat, but keep bringing it back to the breath. We call this mindfulness. This is basically the foundation of mindfulness practice. We, we practice focusing on the breath so that outside of our yoga practice, outside of, of these poses and this time, we can transfer that skill to help us stay in the moment, to be more productive and more, um, more focused on the task at hand and less distracted and, and less multitasking, more of, you know, I'm here, I'm present, get this done. Um, and less like less of the monkey mind so again the foundation of that practice is this mindful breathing of paying attention to the breath coming in paying attention to the breath going out and this brings us brings our awareness into our body it helps us to be more present in our body it helps us to feel what's going on in our body it helps us to know if something's good or bad for us um, so it's really an important an important tool for overall health Take a few more breaths here and I'll leave you in this position. Feel free to stay in this position for as long as you have time for. If you've got a little extra time, this is a really rejuvenating and restorative pose to spend some time in. If you have an extra 15 minutes, take it here. Have some music on or just have the room quiet and give yourself permission to really relax time in a spending time in a relaxed position like this with no tv and no phone and no distractions can feel 15 minutes can feel as rejuvenating as six hours of sleep so um, it's it's really valuable it might seem it might seem a little silly or like you're wasting time but it can go a long way to healing us and to helping our bodies do the the repair that they need to do so thank you for your time and thank you for your practice namaste